Hey guys, how's it going? Well, you've probably noticed by now that I have a lot of quarter jet videos on my channel. Um, I've tried to do several videos uh, showing people how to uh, adjust them and use them and enjoy them and get them to run better. Um, people have had a lot of bad luck with quarter jets, and I think they've gotten a bad rap. There's always people that can't seem to can't seem to get one to run right, but um, they aren't hard to get to run right, and they they're a very good carburetor. Uh, they have a lot of a lot of good points, and you know they have a lot of CFM capability uh, combined with uh, pretty good gas mileage because of their spread bore. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with them. And looking at some of the comments I've been getting, I realized that when I was doing those videos a few years back, uh, I had left out a crucial piece of information how to do something and so that's what this video is going to be about and what that is is that is going to be about these how to adjust the secondary air door tension spring on one of these quarter jets now if you have the dual jet of course you're not going to have secondary so this won't apply to you and it may not apply to anything else besides quarter jet I'm pretty sure it will not so if you have an Edelbrock or a Thermoquad, you'll need to kind of do your research and, and study that. But here we're looking at the top of this carburetor. This is a late 70s quarter jet. This happens to be a factory high performance quarter jet. Uh, I already know what it's off of. This is off of a 77400 Pontiac. Uh, it goes in a Trans Am. And you can see it has a special vent that goes into the, uh, the bottom of the air cleaner used on those. The, the uh, shaker hood scoop. It's got a little screen over this, and it's got some other features that make it more of a hypo carburetor. Uh, it is 800 CFM carb, and I'm going to use this as my demonstration unit to kind of show you uh, what we're dealing with to adjust this. Um, <laughs> of course, these are your secondary air doors. These are operated entirely by engine vacuum, meaning. Uh, when the you hit the throttle wide open and it opens the bottom throttle blades down here on the bottom we'll take a look at those down there those when those open up of course it pulls uh, these open and there's no mechanical connection between these and those down there uh, now right off the top of my head here I wanted to kind of mention that some of these carburetors have down here on the side you see that little kind of a roll pin type of a thing there beside where my finger is I'm going to point it right there you see that's the end of the secondary throttle blade shaft and sometimes these carburetors have uh, a little piece of linkage mounted down in here somewhere that kind of holds that closed until the choke comes off so you know, if you're out here trying to kick the four barrel and it's or it's still cold, don't worry about it. Don't panic about it. That's probably what's going on. But it should, as soon as the choke unloads, you know, it should clear that. It shouldn't have any effect on it. But um, as I said before in the other videos, I, I did some videos I called how to debog your quad jet, and I kind of got on to people for um, taking off this linkage. You see you've got a couple of diaphragms here. This is a front vacuum brake and this is the rear vacuum brake. And they both kind of operate the choke, but also what this front one does right here, you see has a vacuum line going into the carburetor. But you'll follow this linkage right here. And the camera focus a little bit. Follow this piece of linkage right here. It comes up and slides in right here. This is at the end of your uh, secondary air doors. So what this is, this is a vacuum operated damper. This thing, when the engine's running, this thing is this thing is pulled in. It's retracted like this because it has a vacuum seal on it, and it keeps those doors from from coming open. And what happens is when you let off the gas, I'm sorry, when you give it gas, when you punch it, um, your vacuum goes away, so it lets off this thing like this. And that one is operating kind of slow, but this carburetor, normally they operate faster than that. And um, this carburetor is dirty and it's been sitting, so 
uh, they do work fast enough. But the point of that thing, that thing is to keep these doors from flying open, especially if you got a big cube engine like a, you know, 350 on up. 350 is not really that big, but you know what I'm saying. What happens is if you didn't have this thing here, uh, these doors tend to slam open, and then when they hit the end of their travel, they kind of come back closed. And then they may do that a couple times, you know, doing this thing. And this, if you take a look right here, this little uh, piece right here, this is the bottom, your, uh, this, this thing lifts up this, what it is on the bottom is your secondary metering rods are on the bottom of this thing. So uh, that's how that you start pulling fuel into your secondary side of the carburetor. So when these things open, it pulls these up and there's, you know, down in the carburetor, you can take a look at an exploded diagram. You can see what I'm talking about, but they pulls these things up and it lets the fuel flow. So upshot of that is, is, you know, it's doing all kinds of weird things with your mixture if this thing kind of flops open and then comes back closed and flops open, you know, when you got your foot in it. So, uh, of course, it's not going to run right because it's kind of screwing with the mixture because the rods are going up and down so you don't want that this thing your goal is to get this thing to open you know smoothly and that's that's what prevents a bog you know and a lot of people have complained about that so well i hit I hit it to the floor and it stumbles and you know then it takes off and and I, I tell you guys every way from how that they don't do that when they're adjusted correctly as long as you don't have problems like sometimes a the pickup tubes inside the air horn down in there, sometimes they'll fall out. You need to check those, but it's crucial that you adjust this thing, and that's the second part of this. After you make sure that this damper is working correctly, and that you have it all there, and it's it's all in place, and all that, and that this thing is good, and if this thing's bad, then it doesn't function anymore. If the diaphragm is busted, uh, it don't work no more, so you have to have that you have to have that. I know that's a big long spiel to, to tell you that. But the second thing is is that these things have a spring. They're spring loaded, of course. That's how they can come back closed again. Um, the spring is kind of on the end over here, but we'll turn it upside down and let you look at it. But it's critical that you have that spring adjusted correctly and things that guys do before they knew any better and some people still do it because they still don't know any better is they figure out how to adjust this thing and they loosen it up as, as loose as go almost to the point that these things won't close anymore you know they may actually not be closed they may sit here like this and you know you can just barely breathe on them and they flop open you don't have to do that because that's not how rochester designed this thing to operate on the other hand, you don't want it wound so tight that you can't hardly get them to open, you know. So, we're going to take a look at how to adjust those. And no, there is no set rule how to adjust them. There's no baseline. What you have to do, you basically see this one. I can open these up with just normal finger pressure and let off and they close, you know. So, you kind of have to do a little tweaking with it. So let's take a look at the bottom of this thing. Let's turn it upside down so you can kind of see what you're looking at on the bottom side of it. Of course, with it being on the engine, you won't be able to see all this, but like I said, this carburetor is kind of, car is kind of dirty, but there's the bottom of the spring right there. You see that little, that thing there? You see that little rod that's coming down and it's got the spring kind of hooked around it. See if the camera will focus in on it here. There it is. That's that's your spring right there. That's what controls the tension on that. So how do you adjust this thing? Well, it's best to look at it from the side. It kind of give you a better view here. But looking at the right side of the carburetor, here's the choke. Here's a blurry image of my finger again. This camera is this camera is freaking out because of this. It doesn't know what to do. So, Charles, sorry about that. <laughs> Dang. Okay. You see where my finger's pointing right there? See where my fingernail's against that? That is a small Allen screw. And 
what that is the set screw and then you loosen that and then over here facing outward camera's freaking out again facing outward you see in there you see right in that hole right there you see there's a flathead screw right there so it's very very simple what you do is set you down on the tripod get you over here where you can see me what I'm doing hopefully let's see here okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our appropriate Allen key right here and you're gonna get under this thing you're gonna locate your little screw which it's like I said it's right up under there get it in there okay you can loosen remember righty tighty lefty loosen so you're gonna loosen that up some and you're gonna take a small flat blade screwdriver and you get in here get that thing engaged and then when you get this loose enough you can adjust that this is this one's got to go a little bit looser the screw set screw does so Let's go back again. It's not the most fun thing to do, I'll tell you that right now. Alright, I'm loosening it up pretty good, so. There we go. I can turn this. Now, of course, it, I have to take the screwdriver back out, but I'm going to give this thing a crank uh, counterclockwise. Now look at that. You see that? Just turn it that much. See how they're laid open? They won't. They won't even close. So what I have to do is I have to close it back up, and I turn it clockwise. It's still too loose. In fact, I think you probably will have to end up making your adjustment and then doing the set screw, possibly. But this one seems to be tight enough. The screw does so. So let's go ahead and tighten it up some more. And there we go. So it's closing back up like it should now. So that looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do when I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this thing back up. And remember, it's just a small screw. You don't need to use Gorilla Strength on it. Just get it snug. It might help you to have a little bit of a mirror under here. All right, it's snug back up. See, they're, they're closing good. They're not too tight, they're not too loose. Now, a viewer was telling me about his carburetor just recently, and he said these things, he felt like they were hanging up. Well, they're not supposed to hang up. When they do hang up, it's see this is this thing is a loose fit in here. It's not normally these metering rods in this hanger. This hanger, you know, you can take it off. You just take the screwdriver, and I'm not going to, but demonstrate. Just take your screwdriver, just loosen it up, and you can take this thing all the way off. So if you want to diagnose why it's hanging up, you can pull that thing out, and these just pull straight out, and then see if it's still hanging up. Most of the time, what I find has happened when they hang up like that, when these, even if you have this off and it's still, you know, you can't find anything else binding up, it's usually hanging up on the air horn, and that is because somebody has tightened the SHIT out of these mounting bolts, and this air horn is warped now. And when this thing gets warped back here, it starts interfering with the casting around in here. So you can. You can deal with that. You really need to take the carburetor off to deal with it because you're going to have to do a bit of grinding on this. Uh, so really you need to just go ahead and pull the carb off so you can work on it out here somewhere without getting metal in your in your engine. Because what you'll have to do is you'll have to look around in here and find where the, uh, where the conflict is with the casting and just gently file it away a little bit to a little do that. So now if you're dead set against having this thing, if you're just, you can't find it in you to run one of these dampers, I'm sorry. But somebody corrected me on that. Dampener. <laughs> Thanks for the correction anyway. If you don't want to use this dampener, if you're just emotionally against it, then you can tighten these up enough that 
you know, they probably won't flop open, but they will be very tight and that's not how you're supposed to do it. So you really need to run all this. I know it seems like it's voodoo and maybe the <laughs> maybe the backyard mechanic in you says you don't need this, but you do. Rochester didn't know what they were doing with this. So, you know, like I said, this is off a Trans Am carburetor. So they even used it on that. So they weren't blowing smoke up everybody's butt. So that's how you do that, guys. That's how you make that adjustment. And it'll take a little bit of trial and error probably, but you just start tweaking on this thing and you'll get the bog out of it. Um, once you've done all that, if, you, if the case is that you've done all that and you know it's not hanging up and you know these things aren't too loose and you know that this is working and you still got a real hard bog when you get in the secondaries, then you need to probably pull that top off here and make sure those one of those pickup rods and uh, pickup tubes isn't laying in the float bowl somewhere because it will not run right at all in the secondaries. You can't get it to run right. Well, usually when you got a, just a little bit of a bog because of this deal being out of whack, uh, you know, you get past that. It'll go, you know, maybe then it'll go. It'll fall on its face a little bit and it'll take off and stay in the secondaries. But if your pickup tubes are missing, falling out or whatever the case has happened to them, stopped up, uh, it will just not, absolutely will not run on the secondary side of it correctly. It'll spit and sputter and just won't, won't go, you know. I mean, that's, that's, not a, that's not a very scientific term to use, but that's the truth. It just won't go. So that's what you look for. And these things are not, you know, I'm not trying to be mean to anybody, but this is not rocket science. <clears throat> How to adjust these. <clears throat> And so, good luck with it. And ask any questions you need to, but uh, please don't ask me questions about things I've showed you in the video, meaning uh, post me a question saying, how do I adjust those screws? I just showed you how to adjust those. So watch the video, and hopefully it'll uh, teach you how to do that. So anyway, guys, um, I was glad to talk to you and glad to have the questions and the conversations and things like that and welcome comments so uh, feel free and I hope this has helped. I've tried to make a nice long thorough video. I don't believe in, I know some of you get impatient, you don't have the patience to sit through all this but um, and you, some of you feel the need to tell me that but uh, hopefully this will help you out, show you what you need to know. So, okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one.